Representing Jesus Image Family. <laughs> oh, the Lord is already here. He is in our midst. And um, just as I was praying before and in between services, the Lord showed me um, a line of people similar to the one from outside getting into the sanctuary. And he was coming around one by one and shackles were falling off and joy was flooding the hearts of his people. So Lord, um, we just thank you, Lord. In his word, it says, one thing I have desired of the Lord that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. For in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion, in this secret place of his tabernacle. He shall hide me, he shall set me high upon a rock. And now my head shall be lifted up above my enemies all around me. Therefore, I will offer sacrifices of joy in his tabernacle. I will sing, yes, I will sing praises to the Lord. Oh, Holy Spirit, we welcome you. We welcome you. Help us get out of the way tonight that you would come consume us, oh God, that Jesus may be glorified tonight, that you have come to set the captives free, Lord that as we choose to look at you and not our circumstances, those watching online, those in the room, he knew you would be here. He knew you would be tuning in tonight. Tonight is your night. So Holy Spirit, come, move, and have your way. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.
thank the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, you guys can do better than that. Hallelujah. You reign on high, Jesus. You are the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You reign on high. Oh, we love you, Jesus. Can we just lift up a shout of praise to the Lord? I know you just did it, but let's do it again. thank our choir and our worship team. Well, we are about to step into a time of another act of worship, which is giving and tithes and offering. Amen. Come on. You know, this morning, when Amy was giving the altar call, she mentioned Matthew 6, I believe, which is talking about, you know, don't worry. You know, why worry about the clothes that you wear? Why worry about tomorrow? And I just want to go to one of the parts that Jesus says, now if God so clothes the grass of the field, which today is, and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, will he not much more clothe you? O oh, you of little faith. And then the Lord brought me to Matthew 25, which is the parable of the talents. And so I just wanna read a little bit right here. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, and to another two, and to another one, and to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on his journey. And I just kind of want to jump down a couple verses. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received the five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents beside them. And his Lord t said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You were faithful over a few things, and I will make you a ruler over many things and enter into the joy of your Lord. And then he also, who had received two, came and said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. And his Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. And then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man reaping where you had not sown and gathering where you had not scattered seed and I was afraid. And I went and I hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. And the Lord just started speaking to me actually for a couple of days now, my husband and I have been talking about this, about the way that we see the Lord when we give, that he is a father and that when we give, we're giving into the hands of the Father. And in Luke, it says, for the measure in which you give will be given back to you. So when we are giving, number one, our tithe is obedience. It's a commandment, it's what the Lord commands. But then our giving is something that we actually, when we place it in the Father's hand, however much money we have, or however much He asks of you, we can trust that it is going to multiply because it is given into our Heavenly Father, someone who we know, right? If we know our Father to be faithful and true, we know that when we give, it's gonna be multiplied. I don't wanna be told, oh, you of little faith. I don't wanna hear that. I wanna hear, well done, good and faithful servant. So if you have your offering or your tithe or your giving, just place your hand 
Lord, we thank you that this is going into your hands. A loving Father, that we are not afraid when we give to you, Lord. But Lord, would you increase our faith to know that you will multiply it to your generation for your kingdom. Lord, we trust you. We love you and we thank you. Lord, would you bless every giver. No matter the amount, Lord, you see every heart. We thank you, Jesus. In your precious name we pray. Amen. So if you guys need an envelope, you can raise your hand and the ushers will come and give you guys an envelope. And if you are texting, text to give, or if you are giving online, you can text the number on your screen. And for those of you watching online, you can also text give to the number on your screen. We will be right back.
Love you. I miss you. Tonight, Pastor Benny is going to be with us. It is going to be absolutely amazing. He felt led to minister to the sick, so let's believe the Lord for just incredible moves of the Holy Spirit. And may the sick be deeply, deeply touched tonight. And if you came in today with weakness in your body, weakness in your mind, a broken heart, you're just hungry for the Lord. Simply turn to Jesus. That's all you have to do. But what an honor it is to have Pastor Benny and I. Bob, I love you. Thank you. Not sure if you've ever been in this building before, but make yourself at home. And if you need some directions, Carla and the team can let you know where the offices are. Uh, different stuff like that. So I love you. I miss you, Bob. Thank you for doing this. Church, we love and miss you very much. And I'll be back in pulpit next Sunday and I can't wait. I'm rested, ready to roll. Benny's super into it as you can see. <laughs> love you guys. We're driving home. Can't wait to see so you. So love you. See you guys. Would everybody please welcome Pastor Benny. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please, please, please no more. You're kind. Thank you. Please be seated. They told me, they told me that they're going to say something funny, so I didn't hear everything. But I'm sure I will later. How are you all doing? You're all looking fantastic, by the way. Well, finally, my children are back. Thank the Lord forevermore, and the people said amen. amen. Now, listen, before I start, I want to just uh, say hello to Theo. Theo, come here. Come on. This is, this is Michael's brother, by the way. I don't know if you know that. That's his younger brother. Well, you brought the whole gang. Come here, guys, all of you. Come on, all of you. That's his children. Look at that. Oh, my goodness. I'll tell you what. If you did, what was it like if you, two weeks ago, three weeks ago? We were having dinner at some restaurant, and these, come here, girls, come here. And we're talking about the Bible, and the place is like packed. You can't hear nothing. Everybody's screaming at each other, almost. And I began to talk about the Bible. And next thing you know, he just pulls his chair up, and he's like glued, you know. And then these two come, and they're like listening. I was so touched by that. And now they live in Florida. Oh, God. Look at your hat. That looks marvelous. Wow. Look at that. You look like, let me see, you look like your mom. Where is your mom? Anyways, did she? Oh, with the baby. But listen, I told you you can bring the baby. We didn't want you to yell at him. <laughs> wait, wait. You tell him what you say. I said the baby's going to stay home just so you don't scream at him. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, listen, hey, listen. I don't scream at anybody. Well, maybe stand no. up. Anyways. All right, let's all stand and thank the Lord for what he's about to do tonight. And I have Greg Wiggins coming, but he's stuck because he was late. The flight was late, but I'm glad he's on the way. But we do have Joel or... What's her name now? Ludi? Oh, okay, Ludi. How are you, dear? Have we, have we met yet? One time. Okay. Oh, my, you're good. Okay. Lord, thank you for what you're about to do. To you belongs the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And Lord, I pray today that you will bless your people richly with your word. Richly with your word. Establish us in your word. Establish your word also in us. In your precious and wonderful name. Amen. You may be seated. Listen, I'm going to minister the word first of all. 
And <clears throat> I have a few things to say before I do. And by the way, tonight, I'll be praying for the sick. So if you need a healing, this is your night. How many of you have never been here before? First time. Okay. Stand up, please, quickly, will you? All right. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Wait, wait, don't sit down yet. All those around them, stand up and shake hands with them. If you're sitting around them, stand up and shake hands with them. And say welcome to them. So glad. All right, thank you. You may be seated. I am I'm very excited about what the Lord is doing here. In just a minute, we're going to show you a video. I think they have it ready, okay? But what the Lord is doing here is supernatural. It's absolutely supernatural. And a few weeks ago, Michael and Jessica, we broke ground not far from here. What a beautiful area there. Wow, nice. But I believe with all my heart the Lord is going to use that new building to shake the world. Yes. And I don't just say it lightly. I believe that with all of my heart. Look, you're sitting in a building that we built years ago when the Lord miraculously moved in a powerful way. In fact, there was a dear man named Wes Benton and he showed me this property and I jumped over the fence there were horses running around here where you're sitting. And I claim this land for the Lord. And I'm walking around claiming it. And with me, I brought some of our young pastors back then that were a part of the, of the ministry. But we never thought we'd see this. And what God did with this building, the thousands of people that would line up Sunday after Sunday out there. And it was a tremendous move, move of God here in this in this building. And what amazed me is what God did, because we did not even know he would do what he did. All I knew is, got the property and build a building. And this, actually this building was built in about a year. It was quite a fast job. And the Lord just moved so powerfully. It was mind, I mean, I, I don't know how to say it except it was a big shock to me and, and the people who knew what God had done here and was doing. I had in my heart, I knew in my heart, maybe not all of it, but I knew some of it, that God would move mightily. I know what God is about to do with Michael and Jessica, many more. What I'm feeling is stronger than what I felt then about this. I'm telling you that. I'm preparing you. You know, God sometimes shows us a little bit of what he'll do. I don't think he ever shows us everything because we probably won't be able to believe it or even handle it. But we all have, have, have a, a radar in us that says something about what God is about to do. And, and I would say to my staff then, it was a young staff, not a very big staff at that time, and I would tell all of them, I said, the Lord is going to use this building to bring millions into the kingdom. And I had no clue I was prophesying accurately because it was through OCC that the crusades began. We didn't have crusades before that because I would only travel to churches and so on. It was here <clears throat> that God put the team together in this building. All the musicians, all the people that were a part of the first meetings, those big crusades we had, all came out of this church. And millions were touched throughout the world. And the thing about it, we had seven million people in India in one city called Bangalore. And that staff that was on this platform was in that crusade doing everything. They did everything. And there, were, and there were people in those days who did not know how God would use them. Hello, Gregory. <laughs> Glad you just showed up. Gregory, by the way. Well, that's just the way it is. 
This is Greg Wiggins. He's a teacher of music in Mobile, Alabama, at the university. And he's, and you've been working with me how long? 13 years. And he's one of the finest musicians you'll ever hear in your life. Thank you, I am. <laughs> Behave yourself tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, good. So the people who came from this building, the musicians and the staff, think about that God Almighty used those wonderful people who did not know that God would use them in the way he did. Because sometimes when God puts you in the right place, gifts will come out of you you did not know you had. Are you listening? When God puts you in the right place, gifts will come out of you that you did not know you had. And that's what, what happened with Jim Sonero, Kurt Shellstrom, John Wilson, all of them. Suddenly they, they, they began to be used of God in literally affecting millions of lives. I'm here to tell you it's going to happen again with you. Well, wait, hold it with you. Lift your hands, say with me. So, so it's not about my children as much as I adore them and you all know that. We're very close. It's, it's the fact that God has chosen them, handpicked Michael and Jessica. To you they're pastors, to me they're my kids. He handpicked them and anointed them to do a work that could not have happened 30 years ago. I don't think the world was ready at that time for what God is going to do now. Because the world has changed. People have greater need in their life. There's greater darkness in the world today. And there's a need for what Michael and Jessica have. And this new building is going to launch it. It's not going to happen while you're here. I'm going to say it again. It will not begin while you're here. I'm being prophetic. It will begin when you're there, not here. Okay? So can we see it just quick? Because we really need to get this vision alive, keep it alive in them. I'm going to go sit down, and you guys go ahead and run it, please. I released this prophetic blessing upon this property on this day, June the 5th, 2023. Isaiah 60 verse 2 says, The Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. I speak that the presence of the Most High will manifest in a glorious and unusual way in these last days. Surely, of all the places on the earth, that the Lord will show his glory and it shall be seen, surely it will be here in Jesus' image. Welcome everybody to our groundbreaking day. Oh Lord, it's our joy and honor to give you this land. It's not our land, it's yours. Jesus, this is your home. This is your church where your people, Lord. We just want to love you well here, Lord. That's all we want to do is to love you, Jesus, here. I plead the blood of Jesus over this property, over the building and the people. May generations to come know your presence, Jesus. And as Moses prayed, if I found grace in your sight, Lord, you say that you know me by name. If I found grace, show me your glory. That's my prayer, Father. That you would reveal yourself here and amongst this people for generations to come. Keep us from ourselves and from the wicked one. And may Jesus shine bright in Jesus' name. And Lord, may your word be declared in clarity and power and truth until the day you return, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can we, uh, can, can we stand up and pray that the Lord will do 
mightier things in the new building than this. Lord, I thank you for what you've done already here. I thank you for what you've done years ago. But Lord, I praise you in advance. And I thank you in advance for what you're going to do with Michael and Jessica in the future. And Lord, I already know in my heart it'll be greater than I can even believe for. But I pray today, Lord, that you'll touch the hearts of these people here and those watching around the world. Prepare them. Prepare your people for what you're about to do. And we will give you the glory. We will give you the honor. We will give you all the praise. And we do it in, in advance. Wonderful Jesus, to you and only to you belongs the praise. Lift your hands and thank him. Come on. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship and we bless your holy name for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else like you there is no one else like you for you are great you do miracles so great there is no one else There is no one else like you, for you are great, you do miracles so great, there is no one else like you.
bless your people tonight mightily in your precious and holy name let your will be done minister your healing presence and power in a glorious way in this service tonight and bless your people here bless dear pastor michael and jessica protect them increase the work of their hands bless the work of their hands it's for your glory lord no one else only your name will be glorified in this to you be the praise and god's people said amen, amen. please be seated <clears throat> now i'm going to minister the word and i have a very important word for you tonight I want to also remind you this Wednesday, I'll be ministering to the youth again. Listen, I'm going to tell you something. I loved it the last time. I absolutely loved it. A lot of kids showed up, and I'm sure there'll be more of them showing up. I hope that room will be big enough back there on Wednesday. But you make sure you bring your children or send your children. Let them come Wednesday at 7, right? 7. Oh, 6.30. Okay, 6.30 doors open. That's great. And one final thing. Michael and Jessica told me to tell you how much they miss you. I know you probably heard that on the screen, but they really miss you. A few days ago, I just showed up to interrupt their vacation. <laughs> you know, I do that every so often with my kids. I just showed up. In fact, I went to Asheville. I was on my way to Pat Robertson's uh, service up in uh, Greenville. Oh, uh, Greenville, excuse me. Uh, in Virginia Beach, and I decided to drive. That was fun. And I stopped in Asheville. I love Asheville. I had no idea it was so cool and beautiful up there. So it was really great to be there. And uh, anyways, so they told me to tell you they miss you, and they're back. In fact, they're almost in Orlando at this point. Because I talk to them all the time. I, I think you can guess. We talk probably 10 times a day. <laughs> Sometimes a little more than that. All right. Let's go to Matthew 7. And I hate to ask Chad to do this for me, but if you don't mind, thank you very much. There we go. Okay. I am often... Young people ask me, and others have asked me, <clears throat> why is the Bible important to us? Why are the scriptures so important to us? And I want to just say a few things to all of you about this. You are, you are going to be questioned more than we were questioned in our in our time in the past about the Bible. Today, even preachers question portions of scripture. That's quite dangerous, by the way. But I have been in ministry a long time. I've been a Christian longer than I've been in ministry. 48 years in ministry and over 50 years as a Christian, that's a long time. And one thing I have found about the Bible, it is reliable. Amen. Not only is it reliable, it's the only book that you, you cannot stop reading. You know, when, when people ask about how reliable is the Bible, why did men write it? They want to know about inspiration of the scriptures. I was saying something to some of the staff in the back before I came out. I said, when you think about the Bible, those who wrote the Bible knew that what they wrote would mean their life. No book in the history of men, if you think about this with me, no one in the right mind would write against their own people. 
because it would mean persecution. No American in his right mind would write a book exposing the sins of America because it would mean persecution. Nobody in their right mind would expose the sins of Russia. If they were Russian citizens, it could mean prison. No one in China would dare write against the Chinese government in a book. The Bible is the only book known in history where those who wrote it exposed the sins of the leaders of the nation. And the nation, knowing it could mean death. That shows you inspiration. No one would write it without God telling them to. But, but there's way more about the Bible that is so amazing to me. And that is it's the only book that has proven itself to be the Word of God through the fulfillment of prophecy. So I've told you before, I'll tell you again. There is no book of any other religion that has prophecy in it but the Bible. There are no prophecies in any, in any book, any religion. Go, go and see it. There are no prophecies in any religious book out there outside Christianity and Judaism, the Bible. Because they know if one prophecy would not be fulfilled, it will be the end of their religion. The Bible has 2,500 prophecies. All right, let me go on. So think about this for a minute. 2,500 prophecies in Scripture. 2,000 have been fulfilled. What are the chances, humanly speaking, of even three being fulfilled? Zero. Lily, zero. But 2,000 of them fulfilled in Incredible detail. My baby. That's my baby too, by the way. You know that, right? <laughs> Fulfilled in detail. What are the chances that God would, would predict something and say something to the prophets like he did to Abraham in Genesis 15 when he described in detail what would happen to the Jewish people in Egypt and the time they would come back to the very spot where Abraham stood. And it happened. How about the details about Israel as a nation? How about the details about the nations that would rise and fall? And they did exactly as God said. Whether the Babylonians or the Assyrians or the Medes and Persians after them, details. God even giving details about what the gates that Cyrus would walk through looked like hundreds of years before he walked through those gates. Only God. Only God. And think about all the prophecies fulfilled in the life of the Lord. Think about in Micah 5, the description, the detailed prophetic details of his birth. Where? And in Daniel, when? Even the time given of the Lord's birth. All in, all in the Bible. And to me, the most amazing of all, the details of the sufferings of Jesus on the cross. Such details. That he would be beaten with a rod on his head. His beard pulled off. And such incredible details and prophecy. There's over, think about this, over 332 prophecies just about the Lord's first coming. Just first coming. Fulfilled in details. No book can claim that. Not one. And so if anybody says to you, prove to me the Bible is true, tell them this. Or maybe you should ask them first, how many prophecies exist in and name the books of other religions? Most, most likely they don't even know themselves. And please tell them, zero. Then ask them, how many prophecies in the Bible? Probably they don't know either. 2,500. How many have been fulfilled? 2,000. How many to be fulfilled? 500. 
about the second coming of the Lord and the restoration of Israel as a nation. And the 500 to be fulfilled have a very high chance of fulfillment because 2,000 have been fulfilled already to prove that God is God. But God went beyond that. He went also proving to the world through history. We don't need, look, we don't need history. I don't need history. You don't need history. But there are people today that question the Bible. So God went into history. How many documents about Caesar, Augustus Caesar in the world today? Nine. Less than ten. And nobody questions that he even existed. How many about the Lord? Thirty-nine. Thirty-nine documents in history. Most of those who wrote those documents were not even believers. Some were atheists. Yet, details in history about his life, his death, and resurrection. But there's even something even more powerful than history. It's called archaeology. Nobody will ever cause me to question what God is doing today through archaeology because I've been there, I've walked the land more than once. Most of you haven't been to Israel. I have. I've been to the Valley of Elah where David fought Goliath. I've even stood where the little creek is and took the rocks out of it from the brook. The same brook David took the rock out of, I took a rock out of it myself. It's still there. Or Gadara, where the demoniac came running down. I've been to that cemetery. Over 2,000 years old, you see it with your own eyes. I've done programs there. But the most exciting thing that ever happened to me is when I went to the Pool of Siloam that had been hid and covered with dirt for 2,000 years. No one even knew it existed because it sits lower than Temple Mount, south of Temple Mount, because Jerusalem is hilly, you know, a lot of hills. So here's the Pool of Siloam, way down there, and over the years and centuries, all the mud covered the Pool of Siloam. And then they built a village over it called Silwan in Arabic, from Siloam, Silwan, it's an Arabic Palestinian village. And a man called the city because his pipe broke. Water pipe broke. So the city came to fix the pipe. And as they were digging, they, they noticed there's something below the pipe. It was the city of David. And they began digging and digging and digging. And it made headline news worldwide that the pool of Siloam was found. 2,000 years it's been under mud. Nobody knew it existed. So now when they dug and found the pool, I happened to be there. And my guide said, you have to see this. I said, let's go. His name is Shuraga. Now Shuraga takes me to where the pool is, and I'm noticing that there are archaeologists digging to my right. They were, they were digging, and they found the steps mentioned in Ezra and Nehemiah, that go up to the city, from the city to Temple Mount. So I went in there, and I see these people with all kinds of bags and whatever, putting dirt in and sifting through this and that, and I got in there with them. <laughs> and they were digging over those steps that had been buried for 2,000 years. And I was there. And they were fine, and they were, they, they, there was thousands of coins in the mud. Somehow all the coins came down with their rain, I guess, over the centuries. And I took a bunch of coins in my own hand. They were full of dirt. I cleaned them up and stuck them in my pocket. <laughs> hey, it was history, you know? I don't think they let me do that today, but anyways. And I'm thinking, this is incredible. People question the Bible, and I'm holding all these coins from Bible times in my hand. The Bible, people of God, the Bible cannot be questioned. No more. And today, Israeli archaeologists use the Bible for their own map of archaeology. They're using it for archaeology. 
So anyone who questions the Bible does not know the Bible. Did you hear that? Anyone who questions the Bible does not know what it says. It's the Word of God. Hallelujah. So, all right. Now, let me just say a few things. You will never really understand the Bible without prayer. It's impossible to understand the Bible if you're not a prayer warrior. Because you'll be fogged. You will not see it or understand it. Did I ever tell you, did I ever ask you a question about, okay, I'll, let me do it because, you know, a lot of people forget things. Let's say I walked up to David, my son-in-law David right here, and I said, David, I'm giving you a new car for you and Lily. And you peep. <laughs> she just did this like, please. <laughs> Let's say one day God spoke to me to buy a car. Lord, don't talk to me now, please. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> you look at your daughter's face and you say, oh, no, I want to look. Uh, uh, uh. I'm not going to look at her because she'll probably say, oh, please, Dad, please, Dad. But let's say the day comes when I buy a car. It's a gift. But it's no good without gas. I'll get you the car, but not the gas. You go get the gas. See? So God gives us a gift called life eternal. But he says, you go get the gas. What's the gas? The word. That's good. That's good. But, but, wait, wait. The car and the gas are no good without a key to ignite the engine. That's prayer. Hello. So you can have the gift and the gas, but without igniting it, no good. Right, David? Okay. So he says, good, Bob. By the way, they, they call me Bob. Don't you dare ever call me Bob. <laughs> they can, but thank you. I'm just having fun with you. But think about that the gift of life, life eternal, is a gift to you and me, just like I'd give him a car. God says, okay, you go get the gas for that car. You go get the word and what I said in it. That's your gasoline for life. But no good without igniting the engine. Prayer. So prayer today is so necessary because without it, the Bible cannot be understood or even believed. So in Matthew 7, the Lord said what? He said, ask, you shall receive. That's in verse 7 to 11. Seek, you'll find. Knock, the door will open. So the poverty and, and the powerlessness of your average Christian today finds its explanation in the words of the apostle James in chapter 4, verse 2. He says, you have not because you ask not. So why are people powerless? The answer is, they don't pray. You have not because you ask not. So, if you're seeing no progress in your Christian walk and life, if you're seeing no growth in it, there's only one answer. Neglect of prayer. If you're seeing no fruit, the answer is, Neglect of prayer. If you're also seeing no power against sin in your life, if you can't overcome your sin, the answer is simple. Neglect of prayer. Because God has promised us his power. He placed it at our disposal. And all we have to do is Ask for it. I'm going to say it again. God has given you all his power. Placed it at your disposal for the asking, what are you waiting for? You have to ask. And the secret, though, is found in this awesome verse in the Bible. 
because it's key here, okay? And that's in Acts 2.42, it says, they continued, they continued steadfastly. They continued. Prayer is not going to bring power if you only pray in emergencies. Prayer will have no power if you only pray when you feel like it. Prayer has got to become a part of your life daily. So don't pray just because problems are there. Pray to keep them away. Don't pray because some emergency has arisen. Prayer will keep emergencies away, just like Daniel did. And troubles will come, but you'll have the power in you to deal with it. Yeah. Problems will come, but the power will be there to deal with it. You remember the old song? What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. Play it in a key you want. Because it says it all, right? Keep playing. Oh, what needless pain that comes in we, because we just don't pray. Why? We just don't want to pray. We do anything else but not pray. Because we have not carried everything. Stop there. Everything. I said what? Everything. everything. Even the little things. Thank you, Greg. To God in prayer. It's that simple. So are you seeing no fruit? Are you seeing no power against sin? There's only one answer. Neglect a prayer. There is a storehouse available to us. Endless storehouse of power. And God Almighty, it says, delights to answer. He just waits for someone to ask. He delights. He's waiting for you to pray. Like in Jeremiah 33, 3, he says, call unto me. Please call unto me. In Jeremiah 33, he says, I want you to call. Call unto me and I will answer thee. And I will show the great and mighty things that you don't even know. Just call. Now, you know, the body, the flesh hates that. We don't want to pray. I mean, the flesh just says, no, I don't want to because whatever. That's the one area Satan will fight you on every day. And so Paul said, put your body under subjection. Don't let your body tell you what to do. Prayer, prayer, prayer. Or like Psalm 50, verse 15. Dion, you mind helping me? Let's get a microphone to him somewhere, okay? Psalm 50, verse 15, Dion, please. David, if there's another mic, you pick one up too. Maybe you'll help me too. It doesn't matter. We'll just have Dion's, okay. Dion, you mind? Please go ahead and read Psalm 50, verse 15. Because it, it's, it's just, I really want to get this through to you. Please go, Dion. And call upon me in the day of trouble. Call upon me in the day of trouble and what? I will deliver thee and thou shalt glorify me. God has promised to deliver us if we call. If we don't call, no deliverance. Everybody here needs to hear this. I need to hear this. We all need to, need to hear this. Because, why? Because we all have challenges. We all have troubles. We all have enemies. There is a devil out there. There are demons out there. There's a very hateful world out there. And we can literally see victory after victory after victory if you get on your knees long enough and stay. Just get on your knees long enough. And you'll see amazing miracles happen in your life. We, we all know they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength from, you know, Isaiah. Well, let's just, let's begin. So, 
If people are too busy to pray, then they are too busy to have the power of God. If they are too busy to pray, they are too busy to have the power of God on their life. They can ask for God's power till they get blue in the face. It's not going to happen. The power of God has a price. It's called prayer. And what a privilege! So, great activity, no results. Why? Because the devil is not afraid of activity. He's only afraid of God. And prayer will bring God on the scene. So the devil is not afraid of your activities. He's only afraid of God. And only prayer can bring God on the scene in your life. So, would you say after me something? Say, prayer can do anything God can do. Say it again. One more time. You believe God can do anything? So can prayer. One more time. Prayer can do which means prayer is omnipotent, just like God. If prayer can do anything God can do, then prayer is omnipotent because God can do it all, and prayer can do anything God can do, so let's pray. And Jesus says nothing is impossible to the one who prays, right? Nothing is impossible means nothing. Nada. Nothing will stop you. No miracle will be kept away from you. So, the arm of God responds to prayer. And hear this, all, not just some, all of God's infinite resources are at the command of prayer. All of God's infinite, eternal resources are yours when you pray. So prayer is the key. Say prayer is the key. Prayer is the key. Say it again. Prayer is, prayer is the key that opens wide the inexhaustible storehouses of divine grace and power. Prayer is the key that opens up the inexhaustible, the limitless, limitless storehouses, not just one, of God's grace and God's power. Power. And that's what Jesus meant when he said, ask it shall be given, seek you'll find, knock it shall be opened. So God will swing wide open the doors of his divine treasures only to those who get on their knees. Say treasures are waiting for me. Divine treasures. The door will swing open when I get on my knees. So there's no limit then to what prayer can do in your life. And like I said, since all things are possible to God, all things are possible to prayer. Now let me, let me talk to you about some, some things that will really help you here. Real prayer, when you begin to pray, the first thing God will, will reveal to you is you. Because the second God reveals you to you, you will see your emptiness. And then... You will throw yourself on him. When God revealed Isaiah to Isaiah, he says, I'm undone. Woe is me. My lips are not clean. And that is so amazing because in Isaiah, let's go to Isaiah 6, please, Dion. In Isaiah 6, verse 5, he cries out because why? God reveals his true heart when he began praying. God revealed his utter powerlessness. Isaiah saw his own powerlessness that he cannot do anything for himself. Because what prayer really does first, it dismantles you. Prayer has to dismantle you first. And then God will build you back up. 
God cannot trust any individual who is not pliable. Prayer makes you pliable. That God can do anything he wants with you. Prayer keeps you where you are able to surrender. And prayer is born out of scripture, not the other way around. So today I'm reading Jeremiah. I read my Bible four times, uh, sorry, three times a year. And every four months I read it what, like right through. So I'm now in Jeremiah. I began reading it two months ago. So now this is the, this is the third month. And I'm already in the prophets. And I break it down to where one month I read the books of the law. One month the historical books. And when I'm done with the historical books, I begin with the, with the books like, you know, Isaiah and so on. The prophetic books. And when July 1 hit, I was already reading the book of Isaiah. This is July 9. I'm now in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 7. I go in like a train. But God has given me the ability, but I didn't have that when I was young, to retain it. That retention cannot happen in, in a year or two. It takes time. You become accustomed to the word by reading it because the beautiful word is a hammer that breaks your brain in pieces. It removes all the obstacles out of the way. It's a fire that burns and a, and a hammer that breaks. And the more it breaks you, the more you see that the, the amazing truth in it. It's like we don't realize how much rock is behind our eyes. Worldly rocks. And God has to smash those rocks over time. And now they get out of the way and the light starts shining in. Hello! I, sa I said that just to wake you up. You need every soffit to be awakened. Because we don't realize how much flesh is in there. You see, the more you live, the more that flesh builds up itself with, within you. The more you neglect, the more flesh gets in there. And the more you pray, the less flesh is in there. Because God breaks it. And then your eyes get wider and bigger and you're, you can see more clearly. And you're really, you understand what God is saying. And you see who's talking this time. Is it, is it you know, God or is it the, the prophet? Sometimes you cannot tell who's talking. But as your eyes clear up, you can. Did you just know what I said? Yes. Okay. Sometimes when you read the book of Isaiah or Jeremiah, the men themselves are complaining to God about something he said to them. But you can't see it if you're not clear in your head. Because it confuses you. But there's no confusion when the rocket, when all the stuff is out. So time, it's like the hammer breaking that thing inside of you. And now it's cleaning out of you. So I'm reading to, and watch, watch. You can't pray properly with, with too much rock behind you yeah. or inside your head. You know what I mean by that, right? Too much fog, too much flesh, too much world in there. And it takes time to break through that thing. But the more you see, the more you pray. I hope you got what I said. The more you see the word, the more you see clearly, the more you see the revelation of the word. So when God is speaking to Jeremiah, and your eyes are clearer. I hope you know what I just said. Yes. Well, if you don't, because you're not there yet. The Bible is powerful. Because it cleans your head for you without you trying to clean it. You see, this, this brain of yours and mine is always catching pollution from outside. And it, it gets very dirty and very foggy, just like a wick on a candle. And it gets thick with dirt and thick with this stuff that the world gives you. But the Bible keeps it clean. The more you read, the cleaner it gets. And it's so important to keep the Bible coming at you daily because dirt is coming at you faster than you realize. I hope you heard what I said. Because we are being hit by every, from every direction with the filth of humanity and the filth of the world. And today is way, way more difficult than even back in the 70s. Because, every, you know, anytime you open anything, even your phone now, 
even whatever, it, it, it's, it's just coming at you from all sides. Keep the wick clean through the scriptures or the light will not shine. And if the light doesn't shine, you won't see a thing when you read the Bible. So prayer, it's like, it's like when you read the word, the light is really quick. God's light can get through there easily and he quickens you to pray. And when he quickens you to pray, you pray in the spirit. It's not something you, you, you invent. It's not something you, you, you come up with. It's the prayer of the spirit in you comes out of you. It happened to me today. That's why I can talk about it. And suddenly when you're praying, you're touching the heart of God with that, that beautiful prayer because it's not you praying. It's really coming from the depth of your being, like from your depth of your being, because it's born by the Spirit. And, and, and that is where the reality of the Lord becomes so real. Jackie, come here. Come on, come here. Now, last night something happened. Last night something happened. So I was in prayer all day. Now this young man is pure. We call him the gentle giant. It's pure. So, you know, I, I, I like cooking. I enjoy myself. And I'm very good at soup. <laughs> I make the best lentil soup you'll ever taste in your life. I'm giving you a little story. And Michael and Jesse love my soups. So last night, he's standing there, and I'm cooking this soup, and I made Pakistani soup. I just saw it, and I wanted to do the same soup. And they do a lot of spices in it. So I tried new things with my soup. So I said to him, can't you smell it? He said, I cannot smell. He said, I have not been able to smell for two years, because he had COVID. He couldn't smell anything. And the Lord said, pray for him now. I'm in my kitchen. <laughs> Chad is somewhere in the back. My son and Luis are just coming in. And I said, Chad, get over here quick. Well, he was taking his time like normal. <laughs> and he didn't move that quick. <laughs> he was just taking his time. Chad, get over, because I, the, I felt the part of God so strong, I knew, and I did not want to catch him. <laughs> he's too big for me to catch, okay? Something, and, and he's already wobbling. And oh dear God, no, not here. This is the kitchen here. There's a soup blowing, there's a soup here going up, and I think oh, the soup will fall, and I'm gonna be burned by the soup. Chad, what are you? He comes running, and he hits the floor. And when he hits the floor, Joshua walks in and Luis, and they got scared. They said, uh-uh, we're not coming near. <laughs> Luis says, my God, I can feel it. You felt it when you walked in. I did, I, did. I felt it. And Joshua, they felt the anointing and they said, uh-uh, we're not coming near you. Because he's on the floor and I'm holding the spoons. <laughs> I'm just fixing the soup, but the guy is gone. He comes up and he wham again. But now, tell him what happened. Completely, for the first time in two years, I can smell like, it was like I got brand new legs. Like, it was amazing. He can, he was able, wait, sit down, sit down. Sit down. When you pray, God will use you in your kitchen. And that's what happened. So I said, hey, I've been in prayer all day and in the, in the Word. And he said, I can smell. He was able to smell the coriander. I never had coriander in my soup. He was able to smell the paprika that he did not know existed. He didn't even know there was a paprika. <laughs> you smelled it all. No, I never, I never smelled paprika, like, ever. And he had always told me, like, you got to smell this, you got to smell this. And I never told him that I couldn't smell it. And, and then last night, I'm like, I'm going to smell paprika. So I smelled it, and I was blown away. You hit the floor so hard, dear God, it took... Poor Chad was having a hard time getting up. Finally, he showed up. He, he showed up just on time, because I was afraid I may have to catch him, right? Like, on time. 
by Jackie. Thank you. His name is Jackson, but we call him Jackie. Anyways, I'm trying to tell you what God can do with you in your kitchen if you just talk to him. Yes. Hello? Yes. Do you want God to use you like this? Yes. Lift your hands. Father, in Jesus' name, let them, let them experience this. Lord, what happened yesterday, let them see it in the kitchen too. And the people said? Yes. You know, there's an old book called Practice of the Presence of God by Brother Lawrence. That's all I'm talking about. You just talk to God while you're fixing your soup. And you cannot stop because the rock is out. Or the blockage is gone. You, you know what I mean by the rock, right? I mean that worldly stuff that builds up in you. It gets so hard like a rock in there. The word of God will break it. Just give God the tools and give him the time to do it. So if you don't give God the Bible, he can't use it. The word of God, my darling baby Lily, triggers fellowship. And when it triggers fellowship, you can't help but talk to him even when you're vacuuming the floor. Because it's in you, you're in your car driving. I love driving on the A1A because it's nice. And I'm by myself. Usually these guys drive me, but one day a week I'm by myself, it's Monday. My favorite day is Monday, tomorrow, thank God. <laughs> And I like to drive. And I'm driving, listening to worship, and oh, talking to God, and sometimes I forget what I'm doing. But the thing is, it becomes a part of your life where you just cannot stop talking to the Lord. Why? The Word is working. If the Word isn't in you, there's no trigger. Okay. But what I'm telling you here, there is a storehouse of power that will become available to you with Pakistani soup around. <laughs> Miracles will happen with you in places you don't have to be singing hallelujah. You don't need a Gregory behind you. You don't need to be singing for a 45 minutes to bring God. No, he's there already through his word, through his word. The word will always trigger and birth fellowship with God. And that kind of prayer, people of God, is so amazing because what happens, it's happened to me. It really reveals you to you first and you are the second. The second God reveals you to you, you break. Look, look with me at uh, Isaiah 6 verse 8 and 9 because the next thing you see after he says, I'm undone. Now God begins to use him. Because God says, whom shall we send? I'm here, Lord, send me. That was the result of a revelation of who Isaiah was. He saw his emptiness and helplessness. So God says, whom shall we send? Who shall I send? Who will go for us? Then he said, here am I, send me. Why? Why did he do that? Because by that time he knew he cannot do it on his own. God had to reveal Isaiah to Isaiah and how helpless Isaiah was, and how empty Isaiah was. And now, when he saw his emptiness, God says, are you ready for work? Because only God can fill that empty void. He doesn't want you in there, he wants himself in there. Same thing happened to Moses. What happened with him? At the burning bush, he saw his own helplessness too. He said, I cannot do it. Or Job, who said, I abhor myself and I repent in dust and ashes. And I love what David said in Psalm 139, 23. He said, search me, Lord. Search me. If there's anything in me, get it out. Lead me in, in, in the way everlasting, he said that. People don't, don't pray that who are not prayer people. The second you pray, you want God to fix everything up inside of you. Because you become broken. You become helpless. And you say, please, Lord, search me. And, 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 and let me see my, my utter emptiness. Create room, Lord, for yourself in my life. That's what you're saying. That's why he said, search me. He was saying, create room for you, Lord. Because I don't want me in there. The second thing that you'll see happen in your life, which I think is incredible... Only prayer has power 
to cleanse our hearts from sin. You can't be free from sin without prayer. It's impossible. In Psalm 19, David said something powerful about prayer because he prayed that prayer. And since he prayed that prayer, he was showing us there's power in it. And in verse 12 and 13, he said this, Who can understand his errors? Cleanse thou me from secret faults or secret sins. There's a lot of sins we don't even know about. Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins. Let them not have dominion over me. Then I'll be upright, and then I'll be innocent from the great transgression. And he was afraid of what? Apostasy. Great transgression is, Lord, I don't want to lose you. So prayer like that is saying to God, Lord, I don't want any sin to run my life. I want you to run my heart and life. But only prayer will do that. And I love when David prayed in Psalm 51 to wash me thoroughly from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Wow. So all, you know, only and always an answer to prayer, God will cleanse our hearts from sin. Ah, thank you, Lord. The Holy Spirit... I, you know, I got to say something to all of you because I, I sense the Lord in my heart wanting me to say something that I need to say. There are times when we're distracted. We're distracted by family troubles, work troubles, staff troubles, all troubles, all kinds of troubles. And we're not able to be alone with God. And we find that the more we neglect, the harder it, it, it is to get back. Because that uh, rock, that something, that flesh, that world, builds itself up in us and now we become cripples again. We can't move just right. We're not pliable anymore. We, it's, it's tough to break this thing in us. And in those times, there's danger because the price of neglect is very high. And then you find that things begin to happen to you that you don't want to happen to, such as your hunger for the Word begins to diminish. Your faith in the Word begins to weaken. You start to question things. But the most dangerous thing of all is your heart gets cold towards the Lord. And then you're on danger. You're on dangerous grounds. And this is where that old flesh comes back. And that's where the demons of the past show up again. Be careful. Be not conformed to this world by neglect. Because neglect gets you, brings you back into that old life you had. It's dangerous to neglect prayer. So now, since you have all these distractions we all do, then do yourself a favor. Get up before they get up. Wake up before they wake up. The older I am getting, the earlier I am praying. Because my family is becoming more dependent on me. So I like to get up before they're awake. And that's my time with the Lord. And then before I sleep, same thing. Start your day with Him and end your day with Him. And the middle of the day can belong to your people, your staff, your family, and whatever else. But learn something Jesus had to learn Himself. Get up before they're up. That is something I'm discovering works all the time. Because I stay strong. I'm not, I, I'm not able to be pulled away. There's no one to pull me away. They're all asleep. And I put my phone on, don't disturb. Because I know they're asleep. And I do something maybe you sweet people don't like to do. I have all their locations. <laughs> so as long as they're not moving, I keep praying. <laughs> Are you listening? 
I look at their locations, oh, they're home, 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 good. <laughs> Go into silence, silent mode. Don't disturb mode, they're sleeping still. But I'm just marvelously having a great time. And then, at some point, I'm done, and they are just, they're just beginning. Because you know, when you get older, your kids need you, and such things, and that's normal, that's normal, and you love it because you're needed, and you, it gives you a reason to be alive, you know. And you adore your family, and I do. They all know that I, I call them all very much. <laughs> Maybe too much. But that's just the way I am. But the thing is this, I have found a secret. David said, early will I seek thee. Yeah. Early is better than late. Because the devil can pull you away quick. Don't give him the chance. Be strong. And you get strong when you're alone. You're strong when they're not, forgive me, there's no distractions that are needed in life. We all have that. But when you do it, your strength comes back. And remember something about God. There are no leftovers with God's power. You cannot use yesterday's experience to live today. Please hear that. We literally, we, every day, fresh power. Every day, fresh revelation. Every day, fresh anointing. Every, every day, the presence of God has got to come back because yesterday's don't work. I've learned one thing about God, no leftovers in the kingdom. Say no, no leftovers in the kingdom. In other words, you can go to sleep with the power of God and when you wake up, he's, he's gone. Because he demands fresh time with him. He sent manna every day. It didn't stay overnight. Every morning. And that's just the way it is. Very important what I just said to you. Because a lot of believers, oh, I had such a great time last night. Yeah, last night is gone. It's not coming back. God is left. Call upon him now. Because now he'll come back again. If you neglect him, it's over. Now, the other thing that is so powerful, are you enjoying this? Yes. I'm enjoying it more than you. Because see, when I preach, I preach to myself too, not just you. And that's the best time. The best teachings I've ever given is when I taught myself. You young preachers learn that. The best sermons I've ever preached, I preach to myself. Because when you preach to yourself, they're listening too. All right. Prayer has power to keep you from falling. Because David said in Psalm 17, verse 5, Hold up my goings in your path, that my footsteps slip not. Wow. He was praying. He said, Lord, hold me up because I cannot hold myself up. So when you pray, you keep walking with God. If you don't pray, you're, you're, you're going to slip. So it's time to be held up, and only fellowship with God will do that. Think about this. Jesus himself warned his disciples. He said, pray that you enter not into temptations. But they did not listen to him. What he was saying is pray that you be held up. Like David said, hold me up, Lord. But they did not listen. They slept. And when temptations came, they all failed. Because they did not do what, what the Lord said. Yet Jesus spent that night in prayer. And when temptations came against him, which they did... Think about the temptations that came against him. Dear Lord, they could have swept us all away, but he was triumphant gloriously. That prayer in Gethsemane did it. Lily, David, think with me, all of you sweet people of God. He goes from the garden to the, house, to the house of Caiaphas. 
They put him in a dungeon. By this time, he has bled twice. His sweat became blood, and now his face was unrecognizable. They beat his precious face. He was bleeding. They put him in a dungeon all night long. No food, no water. They bring him out of the dungeon. He goes to the praetorium. And now they whip him. And they place a crown of thorns on his precious head. And he carries his cross. Physically, he's exhausted. And he falls. And Simon of Cyrene is called to help him. He goes to Golgotha. Think about his weakness in the flesh, how weak he was. Because it says he died in weakness. He died in weakness. He's on the cross. And the whole time, he would not even look at them when their hostility became demonic. It says in Hebrews how hostile they became towards the Lord. Such hostility, it's, it's unimaginable to us as human beings. Can I read it to you for a minute just to see you, uh, to show you, I, I should say, what the Lord had to go through that you and I will never have to go through. Listen to this. For consider him, Hebrews 12, 3. Consider him who endured such contradictions or hostility of sinners against himself. Lest you be wearied and faint in your minds. Think about the hostility that he put up with. The hatred he put up with. And yet he was gloriously victorious. What did it? Gethsemane did it. Prayer did it. That when he hung on the cross and they were mocking him, if you're the son of God, come off that cross and prove yourself. To the last minute, they were mocking him, speaking against him. But he was so peaceful. He could say, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. And with all that hostility coming at him, he said, forgive them, they know not what they... What did it? Gethsemane. He understood that that prayer will keep him right through victoriously to the end. That's the power of prayer, people. So he said to his disciples, you need to pray so you don't fall into temptation. What happened? They left. Peter denies him. The others forsook him. But Jesus stood against all that hostility and hatred because he knew how to pray. It's time we do it. It's not that difficult, believe me. It's not that difficult at all. I'm almost done, but let me, let me show you something else that prayer will do when you really pray. Prayer will uh, govern your tongue. The Bible says in Psalm 141, verse 3, Set a watch, O Lord, before my mouth. Keep the doors of my lips. Because the Bible says in James 3, 8, The tongue can no man tame. You can't even control it. Only those who pray can control their tongue. Because don't ever forget, many have been destroyed by the power of the evil tongue. Words have even caused death. And only prayer can keep people from saying destructive words. So David said, set a watch over my tongue, Lord. Do you notice how when you pray, you're nice to people? 
you don't say nasty things about them. Because that's what prayer does. It controls your tongue. If you have a tongue problem, get on your knees. It'll fix it all up. I'm serious. And then something else about prayer. Prayer can give you wisdom for direction in life like nothing else. You can have the very wisdom of God himself if you pray. You'll never make the wrong move, wrong decisions. Think about how many people have made a mess of their life because they did not ask God, should they do this and that? Think about how many people have been divorced because they didn't pray enough, is this the right wife or the right husband? They rushed into it without even asking God. Psalm 86, 11 says, Teach me thy ways, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Only prayer can really do that. Only prayer can help you walk in truth. Only prayer can un unite your heart to fear the Lord's name. Only prayer can give you God's wisdom. Psalm, tw Psalm 25 and verse 4, Show me your ways, O Lord. Teach me your path. How? When I call on you, you will. And here's something that I had this morning happen. Prayer has power to open your eyes to behold wondrous things out of the Bible. Psalm 119 verse 18 says, Open my eyes, Lord, that I might behold wondrous things. When you pray, difficulties vanish. Obscure patches become clear like day. Old familiar portions of the Bible become luminous with new meaning, new power. I have found one thing. Prayer will do more than any theological education because only prayer can open the Bible like no one else can open it for you. Shall I repeat that? Prayer will do more for you than any theological education because only prayer can open the book. Only prayer can make the Bible clear. Without prayer, you won't even understand it. No, it's not about knowledge. It's about the knowledge of the Lord. And the knowledge of the Lord comes only through prayer when you get to know Him because you've been spending time with Him. And when you get to know Him, the Bible becomes very clear and simple to understand. So it's better than theology or any education because prayer will do more than, the, than any education in theology. Because when you read the Bible, because you've prayed, the scales come off. It's so simple, really. I'm not boasting, but I understand the Bible today way more than I did when I was a, when I was a pastor. I was preaching not long ago for John Kilpatrick, and he stood up, he said, a deep work has happened in Benny Hinn because of the things he said today. Well, I don't talk about it, but pe people can tell, because out of the heart, the mouth talks. I was in Washington, uh, or I should say Maryland, a few days ago, preaching for Don Mears. I've known him for years. He said the same thing to me privately. He says. God has done something in you. I said, Pastor Don, I opened my eyes with the Bible and closed my eyes with the Bible. He says, it's evident now. I said, you know what? I've made up my mind. I'm going to finish stronger than I began. And there's only one way I know to do it. The Word. Just the Word. There's no other, there's no other answer. Nobody wants to die as a failure. Nobody wants to die having blown it. You want to die right. You want to die with a smile on the Lord's face. Kent Maddox years ago, a man who worked with me said to me, he said, what do you want when you see Jesus? What gifts you want? What crowns do you want? I said, I don't want anything except one thing. I want a smile. He said, what? I said, when I saw him, and I was a little, just a little boy in, in Jaffa, Israel, I had a vision of the Lord. I said, he smiled. I'll never forget the smile. I said, all I care to is to see that smile again. I said, God doesn't have to give me a thing except the smile. That's all I want. Because that's all we want. So we'll be accepted in His sight. 
who wants to make heaven and be rejected? That we might not be ashamed, Paul said, we might not be ashamed on that day. And finally, and I've experienced it and so have you, the Holy Spirit comes only when we pray. Wow. Only when you pray, He comes. If you want to gaze into the face of God, it's only one way. In prayer, we gaze into His face. Without prayer, we don't. And beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, we're transformed into the same image from glory to glory. Back in the 70s, I began to understand this and experience it. Now in my older years, I'm experiencing it in a deeper way, in a, mo in a most unusual way. I don't know how else to describe it because when you're, when you're young, you, you, you see God with different lenses. And then when you get older, those lenses change. They become a lot clearer, a lot more focused. Maybe it's a better word. And the thing that is so remarkable is, when I was young, I needed visions. I don't know. I needed visions. I'll never forget, in fellowship with God, it was April of 74. It was an amazing month, I think, of my life, it was April of 74. And I'm talking to the Lord that whole year, that whole year was heavenly. But one night, I'm talking to him, and five fingers, I felt five fingers brushing my hair like this. I felt the fingers of the Lord, and I said, dear Jesus, please, not now, because I got scared. Because the second his hand touched me, I felt electricity go through my body, and then I felt his hand over my chest. I felt five fingers touch my body. Please, dear Jesus, not now. I got scared. Today, I don't need to feel his hand. It's a deeper walk. Catherine Kuman talked about a dream she had before she died. I heard her tell the story. She said she had a dream of three people kneeling before the Lord. And the Lord came in this dream. And the first person he hugged and held and the next person, he simply tapped on the shoulder. And the third person, he just smiled at and walked away. And in the morning, Ms. Kuman got up. She said, Lord, in that dream, why did you hug the first and you tapped the second and you just smiled at the third? Oh, he said, the first one needed my love. The second one needed just a little encouragement. But the third one was strong. Wow. So when you're young, that's what happened to me in the 70s. As you got older, when you got old, he just walks and smiles. No hug and no touch. I don't need the hug today or the touch, just a smile. Lift your hands, oh Lord, I need that too. Because when you're strong, he doesn't need to treat you like a baby. Because you have the Word now ministering to you. He uses His Word to minister to us. Young people like me back then, you need the experience. Today, just the Bible will do. Just the Bible will do. I give you praise, Lord. Give you praise, Lord. I worship you, Jesus.
and we lift our hearts before you. Father, gracious Father, gracious Father, we are so blessed to be your children, we're so blessed to be your children, gracious Father. For you as a token of our love, gracious Father, gracious Father, precious Jesus, precious Jesus. That you've redeemed us, precious Jesus. And we lift our hearts before you as a token of our love, precious Jesus, precious. Jesus, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, come and fill our hearts anew, Holy Spirit, and we lift our hearts before you as a token of our love, Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, Holy, Holy, Holy are your Lord. So holy, so holy, holy are you, Lord. We give you the glory evermore. You're holy, you're holy. Holy are you, Lord. Everyone stand, please. To thee we ascribe glory. To thee we ascribe honor. To thee we ascribe power and majesty. Only you're worthy of our praise, Jesus. To thee. We ascribe glory to Thee. We ascribe honor to Thee. We ascribe power and majesty. Holy is the Lord. Ascribe glory to thee. We ascribe honor to thee. We ascribe power and majesty. Holy is the Lord. 
to Thee, we ascribe glory, to Thee we ascribe honor. To thee we ascribe power. Holy. So exalt, lift up on high the name of Jesus. Magnify. Majesty. Majesty. Worship is majesty. Jesus who died. Now glorify King of and majesty worship his majesty unto Jesus be all glory honor and praise Man authority flows from his throne unto his own his anthem reigns so exalt lift up on high the name of Jesus we magnify Come glorify Christ Jesus the King. Christ the King. Majesty, we worship your majesty. Jesus who died, now glorify King of all kings. Jesus who now glorify King of all to thee we ascribe glory to thee we ascribe honor to thee we ascribe Power and majesty, holy is the Lord. Can you hear the sound of heaven, and the sound of many waters? You're so holy, Lord. You're so holy, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. I give you a Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The elders and angels bow. The redeemed. Oh. Can you hear the sound of heaven as the sound of many waters? Is the sound of worship coming? from the throne there are cries of adorations 
as men from every nation lift their voice to make your glory known. So glorious, prepare in us your temple. We're born as living stones where you're enthroned. As you rose from death in power, Come rise within our worship. Rise upon our praise. Let the hand that saw you raise clothe us, clothe us in your glory. Draw us.
Lord, I give you the praise for this. sick in body, place your hands on that infirmity. As I pray for you, the Lord will touch and heal you. That is His promise. Heal your people, wonderful Lord. If we were wounded for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities, Cash dies for our peace. With your stripes we are healed. Heal your inheritance. And I rebuke that sickness in Jesus' name. I rebuke that sickness in your holy name, Jesus. Touch your people, Lord. Heal them now as they call upon your holy name, I pray. Heal them as they call upon your precious name. Someone's vision has just been healed to my left. Asthma has been healed. A skin condition has just been healed. Arthritis in someone's shoulders has just been healed. People of God, lift your hands and ask the Lord to heal you. You in your homes, ask the Lord to heal you. The blessed anointing for healing is here. Someone's right leg, you've injured your right leg. You feel heat on your leg even as I'm talking. That's the blessed, blessed power of the Holy Spirit. Somebody has been having troubles with your circulation. You've had numbness in your fingers. You've had numbness in your legs. You feel some beautiful breeze, like a gentle breeze. That's right, that's the blessed, blessed part of God. Sometimes we feel heat, other times we feel a tingling, other times we feel just a heavenly sensation around our body. That is the power of God you sensing on your body. I give you praise, wonderful Lord, an ear infection has just been healed, and I command that infection to dry up and go in Jesus' mighty name. Everyone lift your voices and ask him, lift your hands and call upon him right now. For the scripture says, as many as touched him, he were made whole. Lift up your voices of faith and right now call upon the Lord. Some of you begin to pray out loud in the Holy Ghost. Begin to pray out loud on the Holy Ghost. Someone's neck, you've injured your neck, you've had pain in your neck. I don't know how it happened. All I know, the pain is just leaving you now while I'm talking. I give you praise, Lord. Someone's hip, you've had problems with your left hip. I give you praise, Lord, for that healing. That's right, sinuses, I rebuke them in the name of Jesus. Someone has been taking medication for sinuses right on that balcony up there. You've been taking medication for sinuses, you just felt something go through your body. That's the power of God healing you. I give you praise, Lord. It's got, got to do also so that there's someone else uh, that is that is allergic to your to, to something that uh, that affects your skin. Something that affects your skin. You have an allergy that affects your skin, and you also have just been healed. I give you praise, Lord, for that anointing. People of God, lift your voices out loud and pray in the Spirit. 
pray in the spirit. I see someone's muscular. You've got a muscular condition. You've got a muscular condition being healed. Yes, Lord, thank you. Arthritis in someone's hand. You've had troubles with your, with your, I think it's your right hand. I'm not sure if it's right or left, but I think it's your right hand. You can move it now. You'll, that's right. There's a lot of you feeling the anointing of God on your body. Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. Some of you feel a tremendous heat. Others feel like a, a blessed heavenly atmosphere around you. That's the power of God. If God is healing you, if God is healing you and you know it, get out of your seats and come line up to the left of the platform. Quickly, please. If the Lord is healing you, if you know the Lord is touching you physically, get out of your seat, whether on the floor or the balcony. Come out of your seats and line up over here to the left very quickly. Everybody else, lift your hands and lift your voices and keep praying. Lift your hands and voices and keep praying. If God is healing you, check it out. A number of you felt the anointing of God. If you felt the anointing of God and you know the Lord has touched you physically, get out of your seats and come and line up over here to the left. Many of you are being healed in your homes. Many of you are being healed in, Lord, I rebuke that sickness. Wherever that person is, I rebuke that disease in the glorious name of Jesus. In the glorious name of Jesus. Bring them one by one, please. One by one. And get the microphone there so I can hear you. Get the microphone so I can hear you. No, no, you talk to me. Chad, you talk to me. Or Amy. Pastor, come, Pastor come, Benny, come. this young man had severe neck pain coming into the service. And had, tonight, God healed him completely. Now? Severe neck pain. Come, come, God brother, healed come him here. totally. Lord, I thank you for your healing power. I thank you for healing and anointing. The Lord, he'll never, uh, he'll never suffer again in Jesus' name. Take your seats, people of God. Take your seats. What happened there? Josh, can you help me come up? Pastor Benny, this is the young man who you prophesied that had an allergy that would affect their skin. God is touching him now. An allergy that affects his, his skin. It's exactly skin what you called now. out. Lord, every bit of it goes in Jesus' name. Every bit of it. Josh, you can back help us. Help him up. Lord, no more skin allergies. No more skin problems in Jesus' name. No more. And God's people said, Amen. What happened to the young lady? Awesome. Praise God. She's had arthritis for 10 years. She had what? Arthritis for arthritis. 10 years in her knees. And tonight someone, God is healing her. Someone pick up the young man here. Where was, help him, Joshi, yeah. Where was the arthritis, my dear? In my knees. <laughs> How bad? Bad. How long? About 10 years. 10 years. Okay, can you move it now? Can what? Can you move your leg and check it out? No pain? No. Lord, thank you for this beautiful healing. Thank you for this lovely healing, Lord. To you be the praise. Every bit of it, never again. Help her up. What happened to the young lady? Pastor, she also had severe neck pain for about a week. Tonight, she's moving her neck completely normal. Come here, darling. Somebody held the young man up, will you? Held the young man up. So you've had troubles with your neck? Pardon? It was causing me to have a headache for about the last week behind my eyes really bad. Lord, thank you for that healing. Thank you for that healing. Oh, dear Lord, the anointing I feel here for you. Everybody. Everybody. And Lord, give her a spiritual experience. Give her a spiritual experience. Oh, how you need it. No, the Lord says you will not stay in this desert for too long. I'm bringing you out of the desert. You're at the last mile of the desert walk. 
that dry spell is almost over. I'm going to bring you to fountains of living water, says the Lord. You've wondered about why am I in this desert? Why am I so dry? Why am I so empty? What is the moisture of heaven? The Lord says, it's coming. It's coming. See, sometimes all they need is a spiritual experience with God rather than a physical. And that's what she needs. Pastor, this is the young lady who you called out that had a left hip issue. Jesus, your presence makes me whole. Lord, thank you for that healing. How bad was it? It was sharp pain. Sharp pain in your, in your hip? Yeah, okay. Well, thank God. Yeah. Well, the Lord has done it, honey. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. The Lord is going to start talking to you in dreams. Get ready for it. You've been wanting uh, the Lord to speak to you. It's going to happen. You'll have a dream in about three nights. Pay attention to it. And pray that God will open your understanding. Thank you, Lord. But ask the Lord to speak to you in that dream, because God speaks to us often in dreams. But sometimes we have to call on Him for that. Thank you, Lord. 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 I was in England right before COVID. And I had a dream after I came out because I said, Lord, speak to me. And the Lord just gave me such a powerful dream when I came out. They gave me the answers I was looking for. What, what, what happened to her? Pastor Benny, she moved a week ago and she's been really suffering with a lot Can of- Can you help the people up? A lot of pain in her shoulder and her neck. She was going to go to the doctor, but tonight Jesus healed her. Thank God. Thank you, Lord, for that beautiful healing. Never again in Jesus' name. It's all right. Never again in Jesus' name. Never again, darling. Never, never. Okay. And what happened to the other young lady? Pastor Benny, this is the young lady you called out with an ear infection. Okay, can someone pick up the one with right here, please? Well, you'll never have that again. <laughs> How long had, had, it, had, it, had it been there? About a month. A month. Thank you, Lord. He's here right now. He's here right now. What happened? This young lady, her throat was closed for four days. Her throat? Her throat was closed. And tonight, Jesus completely opened what it. What do you mean closed? Like you couldn't swallow? It was hard to swallow. Pain. Pardon? Pain. Oh, pain. pain when I swallowed, it felt very tight. Okay. Lord, thank you for that beautiful healing. It's there now. There it goes. There it goes. There it goes. You can go to your seat. Help her up. Come bring her close here. You're going to have a blessed experience with God the next few days. It's getting strong here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Whoa, 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 whoa. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Leave Joshua alone. What happened to the girl? Pastor Benny, I want her to tell you the skin condition she's had. Why don't you tell me? It's a very long word. <laughs> it's come, called... come over here. Okay. It's really remarkable what God did. 
It's called hydrogenatus superativa, and it causes me to be covered in cyst on my armpits and my... All I know, body. brother, it's all over here. Sometimes when I feel it, it's strong, and I can't but give it away, because if I don't, it lifts. Lord, thank you, 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 thank you. Well, no more skin problem. Somebody pick, pick up uh, Chad. Yeah, yeah, he needs to work. It's amazing. You told me in the car, <laughs> forget what happened to her. You told me in the car, you can go to your seat, darling. Amy, why don't you tell me what happened to the guy? Oh yeah, you need the mic. Would somebody pick up the girl? I had really bad shoulder pain. He couldn't put his arm around his back. Huh? He couldn't put his arm around his back. Guys, it's all over this platform. Back or something you said. Yeah, he could. I'm in a different. I'm somewhere else. Help him up. When I go, I go. Hey, you, you guys on the second row, get up here fast. Come on. Come on. Quick, 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 quick. Here, here, here. Come here, quick. All right, the Lord is doing it. Get him back here. Ugh. Lord, thank you. Dear God, you know, there's a, lift your hands and ask God for the anointing. Hey, guys, guys, quick, quick. This whole section, stand up. Quick, quick, come on. Join hands, quick. Join hands, quick. Lord, now in Jesus' glorious name. That's right, that it's all over you guys. It's all over, it's all over, it's all over. It's all over, it's all over. I'm telling you, it's all over, it's all over, it's all over. It's all over. It's all over. No, wait, 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 wait. Don't sing yet. It is over, all over these kids here. Receive it. Get them all up here, that whole row, get them up here. Come here, come here, you, got, you guys, you're, you're in my way, kids. Right here, get up here, come on, quick. Quick, 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 quick. Just line up, just line them up. I didn't know this would happen. Here it goes, 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 whoa. Quick, quick, hold it, hold it. Her and him, get them up here on the platform see his glory come down quickly see his glory come down quickly thanks, 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 Lord. use them use them use them use them and the earth it's filled with his glory and the earth pick up pick up pick up the key pick up the key brother pick it up guys pick it up guys and the earth is filled with its glory the earth is filled with its glory. Pick him up, guys. Pick him up. And the earth is filled with its glory. Isn't this your son? Is that get up here with him? They are God. 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 Please bring her up here. Pick her up. Pick her up. Holy, holy, holy. I did not recognize your brother. I knew who you were. Show the hands, guys. Use them, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. All I can tell you, pick her up. Lord, use them. Lord, use them. All of you stand up. Stand up, all of you. Lord, use them. In the name, above every other name, in the name, 
of Jesus. Their future will be a future blessed by your hand. Everything they touch will be blessed. Everywhere they go, they'll bring your blessings with them. And the earth is filled The earth is filled. I don't know what she's feeling. All I can tell you, it's life changing. Now listen, help them up, all of them, and remain standing. The anointing of the Lord breaks the yoke of bondage. The anointing of the Lord sets the captives free. The anointing of the Lord brings rivers to your desert that anointing is raining on you on you that anointing is raining on you it's not by eloquence or talent that God's work is done. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Help us just right there. Your war is won this very hour. It's the anointing of the Lord that breaks the yoke of bondage. It's the anointing of the Lord sets the captives free. It's the anointing of the Lord will bring rivers to your desert. That anointing is raining on you, on you. That anointing is raining on you. It's not by eloquence. It's not by talent that God's work is done. There's a great future for you, my brother. Just be faithful to the Lord. It's not by might. It's not by power. You came to Jesus School to find the way and you found it. You've come to Jesus School to find the, your future and you found it. And the gates are open wide before you, beautifully in fact. You have a great tomorrow, greater than you'll ever know. Your love for the Lord is known in heaven. Your love for Jesus is known I said in heaven. The angel said to Daniel, beloved. He's, he was beloved of God. He said, the moment you prayed, the command came. And I'm telling you, young man, your love for Jesus is known in heaven. God has a beautiful future for you. Mightier, more glorious than you'll ever, ever imagine. And you're on the right track. You're on the right path. Your heart is precious in the Lord's sight. And Lord, protect him 
as the apple of the eye. Hide them under the shadow of your wings, Lord. And thank you, Lord, for the future you have established already. It's already established for his life in you. And as darkness covers the earth, let his light shine brighter and brighter for others to see. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Wow. Now I'm going to ask many of you to surrender to the Lord. You know, it's times like these that change lives. It's times like these where God removes chains off people's lives. And there's people here today that really need a, a chain removal experience by the Spirit. And when there's sin in your life, when there is corruption in your soul, the chain just gets bigger and thicker. And today the Lord's power is here to set you free. But I gotta do something before that. Come here. Yeah, come here. And you too. Yeah, come here. Yes, both of you. Give me your hand. The Lord is establishing a new path for you. A very solid path and a large place. He's enlarging your capacity for more. He's enlarging your capacity for much more. God has placed you in new territory in the spirit. I see an expansion in your territory spiritually, spiritually. There'll be no loss in your tomorrow, says the Lord. There'll be no loss spiritually in your tomorrow, but great abundance and great multiplication of blessings. No more additions, not even multiplication, says God. It's gone beyond that now. It's limitless. What God will give you is limitless. It's all yours for the price. It's a high price. It's your life. It's your life. If you're willing to pay it, he'll give it. But I'm here to say the price is high. And I believe you'll pay it. I believe you'll really pay it. Now, Lord, do it in him. Do it in him. In the name of Jesus, do it in him, Lord. For your glorious name's sake. Wow. I just saw, I just saw like territory expansion. Sometimes the Lord gives us only so much to walk in, and then when we're faithful, He expands it. And He enlarges capacity, spiritually capacity. What we are now willing for more, we are looking for more. We are not satisfied with where we are. We want just a bigger territory spiritually. And God always will answer that. But it means a high price, that's all. So Lord, do it for Him, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. You know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask for something maybe I've never asked before. I know this is an ultra call time, but I think it's more than an ultra call. Ronald Bunky, a few years ago, said something to a group of young people. And I think it was the only time in his life he said it from what I gather. I could be wrong, but a young man was telling me that only days ago. This young man today is mightily anointed. And I prayed with him on the phone a few days ago. And he was sobbing hard on the phone. 
And he said, you know, he, he said, Brother Benny, he said, and he's the son of a very famous pastor up, up, up north. His name is Eric. The young man's name is Eric. And his father asked me, he said, would you pray with my son? I got the phone from his mom, the pastor's wife, and I began praying with him. And he was supposed to come tonight, but he called me yesterday, or I talked to him yesterday, he said, he, he's preaching tonight. So I said, okay, you go preach and we'll meet some other day. He said, when Bonky came, and he was younger, he said, God is raising a, a, a group of young people, a young group to be martyrs. And he said, something was birthed in me. I want that kind of dedication for God in my life. Now, the Lord may not ask us to do that. He's just looking for the willingness. And years ago, a man named Ralph Wilkerson gave me a book that I've read now many times called Fox's Book of Martyrs. And it belonged to Catherine Kuhlman. It was an old book, all torn up and old book. And I was so pleased to have it from Ralph. Catherine gave it to him and he gave it to me. It was her copy. And I opened it, it was all torn up and the pages were almost broken. But then I read something that caught my eyes. I saw her handwriting, the, f the first page of the book, and she wrote, grant me the privilege to be one of them. And I began to cry. I said, Ralph, that's why God used her. She, w she was willing. And that's become a prayer. That was my prayer years ago. When I was young, I didn't even know that this was something that others were praying. I wanted to prove to Jesus I love him. And I said, Lord, I'm willing to die for you if need be. But at that time, it was a cheap call. It was a cheap desire in comparison to today. So today I'm reading Jeremiah and I, I see how he suffered for the call of God. And I pray that prayer again today. I said, Lord, this time I'm serious. It's a deep desire in my soul. I want to prove to you, Lord, and to the world, I really love you. He may not give me that privilege, but I think all he wants is the decision. And that's what I felt for this kid right now, that God would bring him to the place that he would be willing. He would be willing, because that's all God wants. Because the Bible says, if he died for us, it's our privilege to die for him. That's simple. And I'm going to just ask, if there's someone here that has come to that place in your life and you have, you have said to yourself, I'm so tired of this world. I'm so tired of all that's in it and of it. And you want that purity of heart where you would say to God, I'll gladly pay that price. I may not be privileged to pay it, but I'll be glad to pay it. It's my desire to pay it. If you want that kind of surrender, I think you need to come up here and get on, on your knees and tell him that. This may be a night that may never happen this way again. Look at this. Look at all these young people. Now that to me is priceless. Can we pick up this, these young people behind me? Would you mind? Jackson and maybe Josh can come and help. Okay. The Lord has a great work for you. Great work for you. Look at this. Isn't that precious to look at? my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. And I'm talking to you in your homes. Are you willing? 
would you pay that price? I'm amazed by the response tonight here. That these precious people mean it. Most of them young people that are saying to God, Lord, if it means my life, I'll gladly give it. If it means my life, it'll be a privilege. I'll give you praise. Now, I want you to pray your own prayer. Just begin talking to the Lord right now. And in your homes, you do the same. This is the greater, the greatest surrender that I know about. Is when someone not only wants to give his life to the Lord to receive salvation and life, but willing even to pay that price with joy. Do it now. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise, let them flow in ceaseless praise. Abba, Father, Abba, Father, deep within my soul I cry, Abba, Father, Abba, Father, I will never cease to love, love you. Take my life and let it be consecrated, Lord, to Thee. Take my moments and my days, let them flow in ceaseless praise, let them flow in Ceaseless praise. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. We give you all the praise. I'm going to say goodbye to all of you in your homes. Thank you for joining us. Michael and Jessica will be back, of course, next week. This Wednesday, a beautiful youth meeting here. I'll be there with the young people. But before I let you go, give it all. Totally. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. It's time we surrender all. And I mean completely to the Lord, day and night is forever. Only Jesus satisfies the soul, people. Only Jesus will satisfy your life. Everything else out there is empty. So would you pray, Lord, just in your heart, just repeat after me, those in your homes, and maybe those here too. Just say, Lord, I want to know you. With all my being, I want to know and love you. 
Establish me in your way. Establish me in you. Establish your word in me. And establish me in your word. And dear Jesus, inflame my heart with love for you. And let this fire be so intense that the world in me will die. And only your word will live. Burn the world out of me with intense fire. And Lord Jesus, bring your word in my heart with great fire, eternal fire. I want to dwell with you in that fire forever. Amen. Isaiah, God asked the question, Who shall dwell with everlasting burnings? He that walks uprightly and speaks righteousness. The fire of God consumes the wicked but purifies the saints. The fire of God can be destructive to those walking away from God and it can build you up those who are walking in God. For our God is a consuming fire to the world but a lifting and building fire a purifying fire for those who love him. Amen. Well, good night to all of you in your homes. And thank you for coming, all of you here. And would you stand? And Michael thank and Jess here. We are standing in the exact location where the headquarters for Jesus Image will be. The local church, Jesus School, uh, House of Bethany, all of that will be located right here. In fact, in the exact spot where Jesse and I are standing will be the beautiful pond in front of the sanctuary where we will most likely be holding baptism services occasionally. So we're so excited. We're right here in Seminole County off of Lake Mary Boulevard. We own this land. God owns this land, I should say. And the building will be right behind us. The sanctuary, the admin building, and the prayer house. And so listen, we just want to say thank you so much. Thank you for standing with us. Thank you for giving. Thank you for praying. Thank you for being so patient and believing with us. We're believing God that the nations will descend on this property, that they will worship Jesus, that the sick will be healed here, that the lost will be saved, that the presence and glory of God will rest here. We want that. We believe this is holy ground and that the tangible glory of Jesus will be right here on this land. And so we want to invite you to come and invite you to be a part of what God is going to do here. Yeah, we are just so very thankful for you. Thank you so much for your prayers and your love and support. We are truly blown away with what the Lord is doing, and we cannot wait to have you here with us one day. Yeah, and we're really excited about what we're going to show you right now. We want to take you on a journey and show you the incredible design, detail, and vision of what will take place on this property. Our Jesus Image home will be located in the beautiful Seminole County, right off of Lake Mary Boulevard. This is a thriving area filled with families, restaurants, and the beautiful amenities that this area provides. The vision of this property is simple. We want the presence of Jesus Christ to be known. We have a deep value for experiencing the Lord in His beauty and the majesty of His creation. This facility will host our local church family, Jesus School, which is our discipleship training program, yearly conferences, the Bethany House of Prayer, and it will also be an outreach hub for the state and nation. There is vision behind everything. The location of the buildings, the landscaping, the water features, and of course the architectural design of the buildings themselves all speak to the beauty of the Lord. We want all who enter the property to feel as though they've entered into the peace of the presence of God. With all the stress and turmoil that people face on a daily basis, this will be a place of serenity, worship, reflection, and adoration. Rather than this feeling like a headquarters, we want this to be the house of God and a home for His people. 
You will notice that the structures themselves have a timeless look and design. From the stonework to the stained glass, it will feel like the house of God. The gospel will be declared from every side of the property in multiple different ways. As you pull into the new Jesus Image home, you will discover a massive parking area that will be framed by and filled with beautiful shrubbery and trees. There will be plenty of room for you and your family. A beautiful drive leads you to the sanctuary building. You will enter through a stone archway. Upon the archway, one of the foundational verses for Jesus' image will be inscribed. This verse carries the heartbeat of our lives and the construction of this house. Only one thing is needed, Luke 10, 42. Upon entering the front door to the main building, you will see a massive gathering area. It is a two-story structure. The first level will be filled with life. This will be a place to congregate with friends and family, to get your children checked into children's church, to eat, or simply enjoy a coffee around a beautiful fireplace. The first level will also house the youth room. We have a major focus on seeing this next generation love Jesus. The youth room will seat approximately 500 people. This room will also serve as the second year facility for Jesus School. Our children's rooms will be located on the first level. This will be a convenient experience for children and parents upon their arrival. Our children will receive amazing Bible teaching, a worship experience, and knowledge of the presence of the Holy Spirit for themselves. The second level of the main building will facilitate working spaces for our board of directors, our staff, and interns. This will be a great blessing for us as we move forward in wisdom as a ministry. As you know, God has graced Jesus' image with a massive reach through media. Thousands have come to Jesus, and so many have been healed and set free through our media ministry. We will have our very own production studio where we can create content and continue to stream live to the nations. We will release podcasts, social media content, videos, and much more. Multiplied millions have watched our media content, and we believe our creative team will flourish in this new space as they step out into this vital and anointed calling. As you walk across the main gathering space, you will discover the sanctuary. What an amazing space this will be. While we will have state-of-the-art technology in the sanctuary, the space will take you back in time, a time when churches had a sacred feel to them. You will discover beautiful stained glass behind the platform. Stained glass will line the sides of the sanctuary as well, all telling the gospel story of Jesus. There will be timeless wood beaming and stonework throughout. We long for his presence to fill this place, and it will be a home for you as well. We will seat approximately 1,500 people, yet it will not lose the personal feel that we so deeply value. The platform will be spacious with plenty of room for ministry, our worship teams, and of course, a baptismal. You will notice a round stained glass image on the back wall of the sanctuary depicting a dove in fire descending in the room. May the Holy Spirit fill our hearts each time we gather as a church family. The sanctuary space will also serve Jesus School. This will house our hundreds of first year students as well as our general school sessions. These students will be missionaries to the nations of the world and to their generation. The gospel will be declared from this sanctuary space multiple times per week and people will be raised up from this place to share Jesus with the world. And may millions be saved, healed, and touched by the Holy Spirit. Lastly, for our favorite space in the property, the Bethany House of Prayer. This will be the prayer house for Jesus' image. It will be a place for adoration, silent prayer, reflecting upon the scriptures, and worship. You will notice that the house will be built upon a pond. The setting will be quaint and breathtaking. Stone and wood mark the space with warmth and a traditional look that we believe will transcend generations. We believe this will be the hub of the entire property, a place where intimacy with God and pure prayer ascend before him. It is named the Bethany House because Bethany was the place where Jesus was loved deeply. Therefore, he rested there. 
Mary found the better part. And it is our prayer that all who enter will find Jesus there and fall in love with him. May Jesus be pleased with all that takes place here. May he be adored and worshiped on this property. May his word be taught with clarity, boldness, and love. May his gospel flood the nations, and may the generations to come find him here. Will you stand with us? Will you pray and give toward this vision? Will you give sacrificially for the sake of Jesus and his gospel? Will you be a part of something that will outlive you for the sake of eternity? Thank you. We love you. Jesus is beautiful.